prototypers. Today we're going to learn all about capacitive touch sensing with the CPX. For example, how to make this apple, an ordinary apple, interactive. Well, the way we do this is through capacitive sensing. Capacitive sensing works by measuring a change in capacitance or a system's ability to store an electric charge in the presence of a conductive object. So the apple is conductive and so is my body. And as I get near the apple, Notice how this graph of capacitance begins to change. I don't even have to touch it. So I'm getting near and away and near. And notice how that red line is fluctuating as well. And then once I actually touch it, it goes above some threshold and it triggers an interaction on the CPX. So let's get started. We're going to start real simply and then we'll start to build out more complex um, projects over time. I'm going to actually disconnect the Apple for now. And like I said, we're going to start simply and let's start to build up a capacitive touch project so let's go home here and we'll say new project and we can already name it as capacitive capacitive touch simple. Now, you might remember from the CPX diagram, this is on the physical computing website, let's just open that up and make it bigger, that we have all of these pads. We have A0 all the way through A7 right here. A0 is the only one that doesn't support capacitive touch. So we're going to start with the A1 pin. And just like with the regular button piano where we're using button A and button B, we don't need a forever block, at least not in the beginning, because we're going to trigger this based on an event. So let's go to the input block. Make this a little bit bigger. Let's go to the input block. And you see there's this on button A click. This is what we were using before, but this time we can go touch A1. So very similar to on button click. Rather than click, let's do press or down. So when it first, first goes down, it'll actually trigger the event. And then as before, we will turn on some lights and maybe make a sound. And then we're going to set the light back to dark. So when the capacitive touchpad is sensed being down, then it's going to set all the pixels to red, play a tone in middle C for half a beat, this one, and then set all pixels to black or turn them off. So let's see how this works in the simulator. Find the A1 pad, and then let's download it to our device. There we go. It's very quiet. But it looks like it works. And if you remember when we work with sound, it's a good idea to add in an on start, which is called once and only once at the beginning of your program or when the CPX first boots up. And we should initialize sound. We're going to set the volume to 255, the maximum. So let's download that again. Uh, and you didn't actually get to see what I was showing you before. Aha. So that's fine. We're just going to do it again. There we go. So simply by touching that pad, I'm triggering the interaction. So what's really going on here? Before we look at that, Let's build this out a little bit more with other touchpads. So we can add in touchpad A2, maybe turn it blue, and then touchpad A3, and turn that one green, and change the We got C, D, E, there we go. So 
we play it in the same way. So that's what it should sound like once we actually download the code to the CPX. Perfect. All right, now let's let's dig in a little bit and figure out how is this working? How does the CPX know when my finger is there and it's triggering a value? What is a press or a click? Well, let's dive into that next. All right, so I'm gonna strip away this stuff. And uh, we're gonna instead add in a loop, oops, add in a loop that prints out some values for us. So we're gonna print out um, the A1 capacitive touch value and also a threshold that is triggering when the CPX thinks your finger or a human body is touching something. So for that, we're going to use council again. So you can go into advanced to find that, which is down here, or you can use the search. So we could do council log, or actually we want to do council log value. So let's go in here, council log value. And then we want to do touch button touch value. So we could say touch A1. And then let's download that. And this should tell us what that capacitance value is on the A1 pad. So we have that. And let me make sure you could see everything here. So let's see, in this smaller version, how do I go to the council? Totally clear on that. One second. So you can see that over there, there's a show council device, which we can click on. And now that we're, now that we're there, I can actually touch a one and you can see the value changing. So let's uh, now do that. All right, so let's see that once again. So now as I touch the A1 pad, you can see that capacitive value changing that's being graphed in sort of this orange color. And internally, the CPX has a threshold which determines whether um, a touch is being made. So we can change that threshold. There's an auto calibration sequence that starts right when your CPX turns on, but we can also call that um, a calibration sequence at any point in our program. So it's helpful to graph both that capacitance value that's being measured on A1 as well as that threshold. So let's do that next. Let's go back to our program. And rather than printing out uh, just this, we can, we can print out both of those values. So I just copied and pasted that council log statement. And now I can, rather than doing touch A1 value, there's also this button touch A1 threshold. So that's actually going to tell us what the threshold is used to determine this on touch A1 down or on touch a one click. So let's change that variable to this and download it to the device again. And then show council and the device. And we're actually now seeing both the threshold, which was set to 305 and the actual touch value. So let me switch 
over here again to taking a look. So since the threshold is not changing, it's constant, it's set at 305, when that calibration sequence is initiated, um, it's not very interesting to graph as we're graphing here on the second thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine the two graphs. I'm going to show you the raw capacitance value on the A1 pin, and I'm also going to show you the threshold value graphed on that same graph. So I'll show you how to do that now. Um, right. So we have, so what we could do is we could just take these out so you could still kind of look at them if you want, um, because we're going to do something similar. Uh, we're going to do a cons, we're going to do council log and we're going to join two different statements together and print them out like number comma another number so let's do that for this we have to do a join so we can go into text and you see we have this join and we're going to need three things we're first going to print out the raw capacitance value of a1 then we're going to print out a comma and then the threshold So I'm just copying and pasting this button value and we'll throw it in there. And then this, for the second one, remember we need that comma, so we'll put a comma. And then finally, we're gonna put the threshold. And again, this is just gonna make it easier for us to look at the data along with the threshold. So um, let's download that to the device. And then we'll do show count show uh, council device again and now we see that those two graphs that were individual graphs before are now on the same graph with two different lines so let's take a look at what that's so now i'm going to touch a1 and you can you can see the raw capacitance value being graphed in sort of this purple but the threshold is being graphed in orange so it's really quite nice to be able to see oh i see Whenever we go above that threshold, a capacitance, uh, the touch is triggered by the CPX. Now, here's the thing. The different objects and like large conductive objects are going to have higher capacitance values. And so you're going to actually need to change this threshold depending on what kind of objects you're using. So let's take a look at that. So for example, um, even if I just add in the... Um, alligator clip, it will change the capacitance performance of the CPX on that pin. So now, as you can see, the sort of default um, is already above the threshold. So now we're not ever going to get triggered because the threshold is at 305, but sort of the standing capacitance value is above that is around 400 with just a, a wire attached and it will get worse. So for example, if I add in an aluminum can, now sort of the standing value is around 600. And again, our threshold is at 300. And so we're not gonna be able to trigger anything. So what do we do? Well, we need a way of calibrating. Um, so let's do that next. Let's go back here. And what I like to do is um, I, I take a look at the graph for the objects that I'm trying to interact with, and I sort of see um, what their thresholds are as I grab them and I don't grab them. And we can um, then call auto calibration and see if that works. So I'll show you how to do that next. And then I'll show you how to set the uh, thresholds manually. So for this, we're gonna have the user, when the user hits the button A, we're gonna recalibrate the system. So on button A, And then there's this nice calibration. So on button A, click, then we are gonna call this calibration. So we could just search for it, calibrate. You see that it's up here, but it's also in this button menu. So it's in one of these button touch A1 calibrate, just like that. So there we go. So now when on button A is clicked, that's this physical button or this physical button here it'll recalibrate the system. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Download to the device. 
And actually, you know what? Let's give some feedback about the fact that we're doing uh, calibration. I think that that's like probably helpful, right? So let's download it again. Um, okay, and then we're going to show the oops the device console actually. Make sure we're doing that device console. All right, so I unhooked my alligator clip. Let's just take a look at A1. Again, the threshold looks to be about 305 here. And now let's add in the alligator clip. And now our already our standing capacitance is above that threshold, so we won't be able to trigger it. But remember, we just added in this calibration. So let's hit A, the A button. I just did our calibration. Did you see that threshold, which is now graphed in purple? It jumped. So now watch. Pretty cool, right? So auto calibration can be very, very helpful. Let's add in this apple again. We can add in a piece of aluminum. Let's see what they, this is a piece of aluminum. We got to recalibrate with this too, because <laughs> it went down. Or a banana. Remember, the green is the capacitance value on the touchpad that's being read in real time. And then the purple is this trigger threshold. So let's now hook it up to a banana. Okay, the green went down. And now the trigger threshold, oh, that worked great. What else? Let's go to the soda can. But that's why the, the calibration is so important. Now, if you needed to set it to something uh, specific, like you've measured an object, you've played around, you've looked at the graphs, you've sort of seen um, the, the min and max of a particular object, I'll show you how to do that next. So sometimes like I'll have button A, oops, Button A might be this uh, auto calibration. And then we might say button B, and I'll show a different kind of animation, maybe this one. And here we can actually set the threshold. So I think there, if I just search for threshold, yeah. So you might want to set it to something like specific, so something high, like maybe 900 or something. So let's download that again. And again, this will be helpful when you're manually tuning to particular objects. So let's go to A1 again. Let's check out the device console. And it looks like the threshold is being graphed in orange and the real-time value is purple. And it's already above the threshold. So I'm going to hit A to auto-calibrate. So that works great. And it's set the threshold to 525. Now, if I hit B, remember, it's going to set the threshold specifically to 900 because that's what I set. So boom, that orange just jumped up to 900. You can see there. And my touch is still able to go beyond that. And so for like bigger objects like this can, we 
which is, it's, you know, again, it can be a proximity sensor as well. In fact, maybe that's the next thing we do is we make this into a silly instrument. So let's try that. I'm going to save this as capacitive touch symbol with calibration live demo. Just in case y'all want to see that. Okay. But let us do, let's see, let's play a song. So uh, based on the capacitance value, let's play a pitch. This will be very similar to our light responsive instrument. So we're going to delete this. We can remove these two just for code cleanliness. And in our forever block, if you think about it, what we want to do is measure A1's capacitance value in real time. Oh, yeah. I'm not at this camera. <laughs> we want to measure A1's capacitance value in real time, and we're going to translate that into sound. We could also translate that into a graph. Maybe that's the first thing we do. So we do we do graph, um, and graph will work based on that raw value. And we want to say up to, I think it's 1,023. So let's just try this out. So this is no music yet. It's only going to change the, uh, the number of NeoPixels that are lit up based on the capacitance value. So let's try that. And as usual, I want to, ah, oh, why is it showing? Oh, because graph actually graphs the value and puts it in the council too. I think that's okay though. Um, I think we'll still be able to see, yeah. Ooh, okay, here, haha, <laughs> you can't see. All right, so, that top graph is really what you want to pay attention to. That the second graph is just that raw um, capacitance value from A1 that's being graphed with that graph command. But like as my hand gets closer, oh, I guess you can't see the number of NeoPixels that are being lit up. Ooh, I have to get pretty close, but so that's kind of cool. So the standing, you know, value of this large this aluminum can is about 600 and so there's not actually a lot of room to get beyond, I guess if I go real slow so within a couple of centimeters so let's also now translate that into some sound Let's go back here. And again, this will be very similar to our light responsive instrument. So we want to do music and we'll play a ringtone. Not at middle C, but rather at. Thank you very much. But rather at this touch value. And just as before, I think we're going to add in just like since it goes from zero to 1,023 and zero hertz is obviously not an audible range. Um, and I guess it really won't matter because this never gets down to zero. So I guess we could just keep it simple. Um, I was just gonna add some some hertz to, to the default. But uh, yeah, let's try to download this and see what happens. I Maybe mean, you can't even hear it, which is probably a good thing.
Gimana kayak gitu tadi? And you can look at our more co complicated examples for the light responsive instrument to see how we might translate this into actual notes rather than random frequencies. But we're getting somewhere. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build up something more complicated with a variety of different kinds of objects. <laughs> and I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> 